Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2020 release Slacks. Yes, that is S-L-A-X-X. -X. And it is what it sounds like. It is about killer pants. Now, that sounds stupid. It sounds ridiculous. But it's actually a good film. Now, this is coming to Shudder. It's a Shudder original film, and it's coming Thursday, March 18th. And because I'm putting this review up before it's on Shudder, and since it's new to Shudder, uh, no spoilers in this review. Now, maybe a slight bit thematically, but... Uh, you should be able to watch this and um, not have the movie ruined for you. But I am going to kind of hype this up uh, because I like it. Now, I had seen the trailer or a portion of the trailer for it mm, some months ago. And I was like, ooh, that looks like uh, a lot of kind of stupid fun. And it is, but there's also more to the film than you would assume there is in the sense of there's really a point to it. I was very surprised that there's actually like a backstory on these killer pants because I was just assuming it'd just be like, boom, killer pants, they go on a rampage, that's about it. It's just like blood and fun. Um, that is a part of it, but there's way more to it. So I was pretty surprised that there's actually like a good script to it and it's not just like bloody fun. So let's talk about it a little bit more. Directed by Elsa Kephart, uh, who also directed Graveyard Alive and Go in the Wilderness. Also written by Kephart, as well as Patricia Gomez. And Patricia Gomez also worked on the script for Graveyard Alive, just so you know. Um, now, synopsis, what is this? I'm not going to say much. It's about killer pants. And it takes place in a store that is getting ready for the launch of this new product that they don't know are killer pants, basically. That's all I'm going to tell you. Does it sound interesting? Does it sound ridiculous? Yes, it's ridiculous. Yes, it's interesting. But it's so much fun. It There's some good gore to it. Although, one of the things I would have liked more in-depth uh, violent gore scenes as far as the kills go, I feel like there were a few, but not all of them. And I'm assuming that's just because of budgetary restraints. Um, but I, I'm not... <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not upset with the way that they did it. I'm not upset with the way it ended up. It's not one of those situations where the whole film goes through and you're just like, I feel like I didn't get payoff for any of those kills. No, you do get payoff for the kills. And even the kills where you're, where it's not like explicitly they're showing a lot to the actual kill happening, um, you are hearing things that um, let you know what's going on that sound pretty good. You're seeing some movement and some motion that helps with the scene. Uh, and there is one kill in particular in this film that really went for it. I feel like they were just like, we need at least one that's just like in your face, over the top, super satisfying. And it was. It was great. I love it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one that is, but it's in there. Just know it. Because the first, I will tell you at least this much, the first few are not like dead on seriously like super gory, violent, but it's in there. Just trust me. Between the music, the comedic touch, and the energetic delivery of the actors, the film starts with a very fun air. Now, that's important for a film like this that has a ridiculous concept because you want people to come into it thinking fun. You know, nobody wants to come into a movie like this and think it's, it's going to be serious or it's going to be like straight horror or horror drama. Like, it has to have comedy to it. And it does. That was the right choice. And it feels good. It feels fun. It feels like a good time immediately. And I, you know, I mentioned the music, but the music does add a lot to this. And I really enjoyed the music and the way it was integrated into the film. I think it really helped things out. Uh, the film oozes the over-the-top fakey nice that you end up getting from people who work at clothing stores. I'm sure everybody's experienced that at some point. And it kind of harkens to those ones that people really know about, you know, like a Gap, an Old Navy, a Aeropostale, American Eagle, you know, those types of things. It's kind of like a, it's a parody of those particular stores, and it's easy for people to see that in it. And it'll feel familiar, you know, there will be a lot of characters in this that feel familiar to people, not just because, you know, necessarily you've been a customer there, but maybe you worked there at some point. And I think for the people who have worked at places like that, which I have not, that this may hit as even better of a film. It may be even more fun. It may be even more kind of, it's weird to say this, but kind of personal in a way, because there is some aspect to that. But yeah, it was, uh, it was well done. Uh, but you also do get to see kind of behind the masks of the characters as well 
because they're not all nicey nicey because you can tell it's that fakey nice and the interesting thing is it's kind of like two people not working at the store they're just fakey nice to each other they're fakey nice and at the same time real jerky and it's an interesting thing like the way that the dialogue is written and the actors deliver the lines like it, they're saying they're delivering one line but it sounds both nice and mean at the same time. So I think that was an accomplishment as well. So I like that. And that just kind of leads also to the point that the interactions between the characters are quite good in this film. And they feel real too for the world that's that's set up initially. The commercial aspects are very ridic ridiculous but actually feel like they're not that far away from how these companies are in real life. Uh, commercial aspects I mean as in you know, they have, like, actual a commercial in this that's kind of like a, here's the new product, and they talk about it in a certain way and kind of really, you know, talk it up. And, yes, it's over the top. Yes, it's kind of comedic. But you when you really take it in and you kind of think about those actual places in real life, you're like, it's not really that far off, though. <laughs> so it, it just kind of points out some of the ridiculousness of what's actually in front of us all on a daily basis. The culture of the young hip clothing store in the film is kind of cult-like, which again, feels exaggerated, but probably like it's not all that far from real life with some of these places. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, we create this positive attitude and this positive environment and you got to be all in about this company and like that type of energy to it that makes it seem very kind of cult-like and watch the movie. You'll see what I mean. It works though. It works very well with this, with this story. Um... There's a quick scene that gives you the idea there's actually something more to these killer pants than you thought there would be in this film. I already kind of alluded to that aspect that there's actually a backstory for it, but there's one particular moment early on where, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens, but it's just kind of like, oh, there's, there's something else happening here. And that's great because it creates this moment of intrigue. You're not just having fun at that point. You're also like, hmm, where is this actually going? Where's the story going to go? Is there actually a story to it? And I'm going to tell you, yes, there is actually a story to it with an actual point with an actual, like, underlying theme. So, yeah. They do a good job capturing the anxiety of the first day on the job for someone taking the first day on the job for this, the character of Libby. Uh, she's a new employee there. So they really, through her eyes, basically, create this really good feeling of like anxiety on the first day you know you want people to like you you don't want to mess up too much and also how those people who are established in that in their positions at that place kind of tend to treat you either they're ignoring you or they're being mean to you or they're being kind of nice to you but not too nice to you so it feels kind of realistic from that standpoint and you can feet and you can feel that kind of anxiety uh with that character a good character uh, there's some good fun poked at ridiculous, the ridiculous nature of online fashion influencers. It's not a huge part of the film, but there's a little bit of that that goes in there. Once again, it's done very exaggerated, but you look at it and you're like, is it really that far from real life? It makes you chuckle. I don't think it was possible. I didn't think it was possible, but they created a good creature out of killer pants. That is something that also, uh, kind of surprised me because I assumed, okay, it's killer pants. They're just going to look like pants and they'll just like wrap around someone and kill them somehow. There's a lot more to that. You know, the way the kills happen are pretty creative. Uh, the way they make the pants look at certain times are very creative and I did not see coming. So trust me, the killer pants are actually a good creature. I I'm down pretty good ending with this film too. I, I was down with the ending. I did enjoy it. Uh, and there is, a, during the, the end of credits, there's actually a series of kind of like behind the scenes clips of, you know, like people goofing off basically. And it's fun and it's cool. And it was really awesome to see that. I wish that was something that filmmakers would do more often. Uh, cause those are always nice to just be like, oh, they were having fun on the set too. Like th the fun is in the film, but people were having fun behind the camera as well. And that's awesome. Uh, for what I assumed the film would be, I was pretty impressed with the acting. 
the acting really impressed me because I thought this would be, you know, your typical low budget film. The actors are meh. no, the actors in general, really good. Uh, I was very, very impressed. I really liked them. The writing of the character Craig is particularly good in this. And the actor Brett Donahue really brings that character to life. He's my favorite of the actors in this film. He did a lot with that character. Now, it's not all him. Like, the character's well-written in the first place, and the, the lines of dialogue are great. But he then steps into the role, and he really took it on and brought it to life. So, Craig. Look out for Craig. <laughs> Love Craig in this. All the significant characters except the newbie Libby are nice and mean at the same time with just about every line of dialogue. This seems to be an indicator of being overtaken by a commercial culture, basically, which isn't just, a, I, I don't think is just a statement on the people who work there. I think it's kind of a statement on society in general being take, taken over by the consumer and commercial aspect of things. This is a parody of how far people are willing to go for good looks and success. That is one of the things. Uh, this whole thing is parody. There are a lot of parodies within it, but I think one of the larger parodies is kind of that parody of looking for, you know, wanting to look good and at what cost and, you know, wanting to be successful and at what cost. And my final thought on this is there's an ultimate point about the ethics of commercial companies and how they portray themselves publicly versus what actually goes on behind the scenes. Which, yeah, it, it, it ends up being kind of thought-provoking in that sense. Um, and you'll see how it kind of gets there. Um, so yeah, like I said, I wasn't expecting it. But there was so much more to Slacks. And I would like to see a sequel or something else kind of like this. Where maybe there's another type of uh, killer something that seems kind of ridiculous but these same people make the film. Yeah, so it, it looks good, it feels good, it's a fun time, it's a good film. I'm a fan of it. I, I, I quite enjoyed it. This is one of those Shutter films, either original or exclusive, this one's an original in this case, that I really think you should not miss. The, this one, especially if you've seen the trailer already and you're like, that looks like it could be fun. Well, I'm confirming, it is fun. And there's so much more, so check that out. So anyway, uh, with... Out of five stars with half stars in play, oh, I have this conundrum. So I kind of feel like I'm between a three and a half and a four, but I don't, you know, I don't think, yeah, it hits a four. Because because I was, I was thinking, like, I'm not sure it necessarily hits that four, but with the way the comedy is actually integrated and the fact that it surprisingly is, like, a legitimate good story on top of that, I, it's got to bump that up to the four. So I'm going to give it four out of five stars. This one is a good one. It is fun. It is a great time. Recommend it to everyone. I'm going to be making people watch this, honestly. I definitely am. And I'm interested to see what Elza Kephart can do in the future, too, because good stuff. Anyway, thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button. That is your way to repay me if you like this review video or any video I've ever done. Um... Take, literally takes you a second and it's totally painless also hit that subscribe button because then you'll know or i'm sorry other than the subscribe button hit the notification bell button that way you'll know anytime that i'm putting up a new video and you can jump on the video immediately help me gain some traction if you please uh, but regardless thanks for taking your time to check this out and until next time keep it brutal